tonight. It's the end of Loss while Celia takes the show. It's expected to become a hurricane later this week. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 21st. Well, here we are with another day in the wide world of tropics. We have two systems active. Chalk with the Prussian Stelia, which has been struggling, but it looks like it is about to be on the upswing again. And the remnants of Bloss. Uh, Bloss did degenerate into a post-tropical cyclone after it failed to sustain convection for over 24 hours. 30 storms remains the total count for this year so far. It's day 21 of Atlantic hurricane season. No areas of interest exist for the next five days. However, we are tracking some ensembles that do want something uh, a bit far south, something in the Caribbean or potentially uh, even the main development region, but that's probably not for another week or so. In the eastern Pacific, we're looking out for tropical depression Celia. It's expected to become a tropical storm some point tomorrow before strengthening into a hurricane later in the week. Bloss is likely to dissipate in about one or two days, for right now it is a remnant low on this 38th day of eastern Pacific hurricane season. For the Western Pacific, no areas of interest exist. It's been pretty quiet for the last two months, and that pattern is expected to stay the case in the next five days. However, the GFS does want something else. We'll get into that when we discuss our models later on in this bulletin. For right now, it is all quiet here. In the North Indian Ocean, it is also quiet with no systems active and nothing expected in the next five days. As to be expected given the fact that we are in between peaks, now that we are entering the first day of summer, uh, it is looking like we have definitely come and gone with that first peak. Nothing expected anytime soon here. Here is the satellite floater imagery on Tropical Depression Celia. You can see that it is being completely sheared still. 20 to 30 plus knots of shear having affected it the last several days. Uh, it still has an LLC, which is why it's still remaining classified as Tropical Depression with all the convection on its western side. It is expected to finally become uh, healthier in a bit, but as of right now, uh, that's what we're looking at. Here is the Atlantic satellite imagery, and you can see what's going on there. Uh, we have uh, not much going on. It's an extratropical low to the north of the Iberian Peninsula, and a frontal system that has been uh, crossing through the Western Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see Bloss to the south of Mexico there, and you can see what is left of uh, Bloss uh, to the south of Baja California. To the left of it, just a bunch of dry air, nothing that's going to be developing in any time soon. Uh, with the Western Pacific, you can see what's going on here. Not really much of anything, no disturbances to speak of, and there really isn't anything that's going to be potentially dis uh, developing in the next five days to come. Other than that, there's a frontal system near Japan. In the North Indian Ocean, it's the same picture here. Uh, monsoonal activity going on in uh, India and Bangladesh. Now, that monsoon has actually been responsible for over 100 fatalities already. Arabian Sea looking pretty quiet as per usual. And as we head into the southwestern Indian Ocean, it's all quiet here, not much going on. Some showers and thunderstorms uh, to the eastern part of the basin, but nothing really going on near Madagascar itself. As we head to Australia, there are some thunderstorms that have been flaring uh, near Indonesia and southward. It could affect parts of northern Australia, but other than that, there's really nothing that is going on. Uh, obviously, we are in the uh, off-season for the southern hemisphere, so nothing expected anytime soon there. Here the sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific is around 28 to 29 across portions of southern Mexico southward. And it goes a lot cooler as you head westward. Gulf of Mexico is getting extremely warm from 30 to 31 degrees Celsius temperatures now off the coast of Louisiana thanks to the heat wave. As you head into the Caribbean and the main development region, it's around 27 to 28 on average. Western Atlantic is also around 28 degrees Celsius. And as you head into the subtropics, it is around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius. As you head into the Bay of Bengal in Arabian Sea, it's around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius throughout much of the basin. And as you head into the southwestern Arabian Sea, that temperature does decrease to around 28. In the western Pacific, the temperatures are around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius across much of the basin, especially as you head into the area east of the Philippines and into the southern part of the South China Sea. And once you go into the southern hemisphere, we are looking at those temperatures that decline as you head westward. Near Australia, it's around 27 to 28. As you head into the southwestern Indian Ocean, those temperatures do decrease to around 25 to 26. 
going into our sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see how anomalously warm the Gulf of Mexico is starting to get. Just the immediate coast of Louisiana is starting to become 3 to 4 degrees above average. Uh, some areas in the immediate coast looking at 32 to 33 degrees Celsius temperatures already. A pretty concerning sign other than the Atlantic remains above average, and same for the Western Pacific and much of the North Indian Ocean in general. East Pacific looking below average now. Here are the ocean heat content, and there's that pocket of really good ocean heat content if anything gets over into... Uh, the area south of Mississippi and Alabama, but given the conditions right now, that doesn't seem like play. In the western Pacific, there is plenty of ocean heat content uh, for any storm to tap into, just environmental conditions have been hostile. Eastern Pacific's not looking too great in terms of OHC at all, so uh, t two polar opposites there. Alright, so we're looking at the computer models. This is a courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, 18Z's GFS, as we typically use uh, in our TWBs. You can see the little isobars that are closed over here south of Baja California, that's Rona to Blas, and then the larger one to the south of Mexico, that will be Celia. As we head into the next five days, you can see what the GFS does with that. It takes a bit of time for it to regain itself, uh, but eventually as we head into day four and five, we do see that strengthening trend, and Celia uh, is depicted getting to category one hurricane strength by day five uh, to the south of Baja California. Uh, there was a little bit of a spin up. If you noticed, uh, there was a little uh, low pressure system to form at hour 84. I don't think that would be much of anything to be concerned about. Um, probably not much of anything. Um, so that is what we're looking at in terms of there. In terms of the other regions, I know people have been tracking the Western Pacific, so we'll go through the next five days here. If you look, there is nothing through the first three days, and as we head into day four and five, things begin uh, to get slightly interesting. This little monsoon that we see to the east of the Philippines uh, it could become the uh, precursor to something if the GFS is right. However, this is the only model that depicts the solution that we'll see in the medium range model segment of things, so we'll get to that in a bit. Looking at the longer range, this encompasses our 120 to 240. And you can see what the GFS does with Celia. It peaks at around 976 millibars on uh, next Sunday uh, before the weakening eventually begins. It looks like they also develop another disturbance to the south of Mexico, but it never does end up getting itself together. You can see another system that it tries to produce in the Atlantic, making landfall uh, near the Nicaragua border there. And eventually, both systems do end up dying. Um, not really much to say there. Uh, so. This is what we could be looking at by the end of the month. Uh, everything pretty much dying and going away in the Eastern Pacific for some time. Looking into the Western Pacific in terms of the long range, that disturbance that the GFS is trigger happy about does end up getting itself together. Uh, becomes a tropical storm next Tuesday before ending up uh, becoming a typhoon. Now I should note this is very unlikely given the fact that no other model is supporting this. Uh, we do have these tendencies where GFS tries to depict a ghost storm. Uh, we had that a few uh, weeks ago where the GFS wanted a Category 3 in May uh, in the Atlantic and obviously that didn't happen so I really would not put too much money on this. Um, we, we'll keep track just in case trends change but as of right now uh, this is an outlier model and should not be used for the Western Pacific currently. We also have the Force 13 store being covered in our shameless plug as we usually do in these. You can request animations and get some merch as this 26 year old male named Nathan Foy is wearing. Hey look, it's a pillow, you can buy one of those too! With the silly range, it's not looking too different today compared to last night's CWB. We're still looking at that uh, Western Pacific Typhoon that the GFS develops as the outlier. It gets the Silly Models Award given what happens afterwards. Uh, the forecast that they have for tonight is that this Typhoon ends up slamming into Japan as a Category 1, bringing significant rainfall and pretty much riding up the coast uh, up until central Japan before finally going away. Uh, and then eventually uh, it goes back to there being nothing. Uh, so not much in terms of full-on cancer, but it's still pretty cursed and not likely to happen given the fact this is an outlier overall. So thank you GFS, we love your ability to slam things into places as Category 1's plus, even though no other model supports it. That brings us over to our On This Day, and tonight we're looking at June 21st, 2000 where we had Hurricane Carlotta peaking as a 150 mile an hour storm to the south of Mexico. It would end up being the strongest storm of the 2000 Eastern Pacific hurricane season. 
uh, and that is pretty much all it ended up being known for really. It was a fish storm, and there were no other storms that were active on this side of the uh, world. And none for in any part of the world for that matter. You can find more of our on this day products powered by Cyclone History. Their tag is on the bottom bar below. That brings us over to the next names in the Atlantic. The next name is Bonnie, followed by Colin. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name here is Darby, followed by Estelle. And in the Central Pacific, while some people may know how to swim, we here at Force 13 love drowning your hopes that honey will ever come. Moving on over into the Western Pacific, the next name here is Chaba, followed by Irie. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name here is Citrang, followed by Mandis. To, uh, I've been saying this for quite some time now, that doesn't appear to be changing uh, for the next few days at the very least, unless somehow the GFS ends up verifying, which I don't foresee. In the Australian region, the next name is Darian. In the Southwestern Indian Ocean, there's only a matter of days to get Let Lama uh, left before the names change, and in the South Pacific, the next name is Holly. We'll be back with another TWB tomorrow night.